Hello and welcome to a video I should have put out probably when I started all of this craziness. Um, this video is going to be based around the basic basics things that, when jumping in the Shadowrun now that it has been out for a little while, are a little bit more complex than before. It's, you know, when it when Fifth Edition first started, oh, it's, a new book comes out. I'm gonna I'll just grab the new book as it goes and that kind of thing. This is going to be kind of a quick look at the different books and what they offer my personal rankings on when you should buy them and their individual worth, a couple of commentary things about it. Uh, I will briefly talk about Hero Lab and Chummer, and I will briefly talk about some of the other things that you may need or want to, to play and how you want to, want to do that, but I probably won't put links for those things, so I'll just go on with this. Um, first and foremost, you're going to need the core book, because that's where it has all of the rules for everything in it things from character generation to magic to matrix to the combat all of the rules are in there most of the other books you can pick up bits and pieces of them to add into your game but without the core book that's kind of where uh kind of where things fall apart uh from there it's typically going to be a where do you want to go to add new stuff i really recommend playing a bit with just the core book if this is a new system for you it's a, a bit easier. Uh, the only potential difference that I would add would be Run Faster, because Run Faster has a bunch, three actually, different character creation methods. They have a sum to ten, which changes how the priority system works. They have a s details on a straight karma buy, where you get a bunch of karma by whatever stats, qualities, and stuff that you want as you go. And then they have the life modules, which show, which give you options at different parts during your character's life as they progress. And each option that you choose at the different parts gives you a couple of skill points here, some new to spend on this, that, or the other thing, a quality, that kind of stuff, and kind of moves you along. In addition, they take you from just your five races to a bunch. Uh, there's three variants, I believe, for most of the races, and only one additional one for humans. It also is where you can get your information for playing, infected changelings and shifters i would really recommend that you don't for your your first game you don't do anything with infected because there's a lot of abuse that can very quickly and accidentally come up in your game things like regeneration power and essence drain are are straight up silly the way that regeneration is like at the end of the combat turn just get back free boxes of damage and then you can Combine that with something like a magician, and silly things happen. And then the essence drain power lets you boost your stats for murdering of a, a random NPC. Um, the surge stuff has a bit more of a uh, unique set of things. It's It's got some cool stuff, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to get working, um, mostly because the negative qualities that are associated with it are very limited in their scope compared to the positive qualities. There's about twice as many positives as there are negatives, which is unfortunate because the way they want you to math it out, it's your positive metagenic qualities have to be the same thing as your negative metagenic qualities with like a one point differential. So having significantly less negative options makes it a lot harder to make them balance. And I will probably do a whole video on changelings at some point in time. Shifters are really cool. I like them. However, an in incredibly important thing to remember is that in Shadowrun, you are not a person who turns into an animal. You are an animal. You can't take the form of a person. As such, you kind of need a really strong reason for this wild creature to want to interact with the human world. If you follow any of my actual play videos that I have up here, I play a shifter by the name of Casa. She has come to Seattle because she is looking for her cubs, and she has found one of three of them at the point of this recording, and I find it hard at this juncture to have a reason for her to continue to run the shadows after she gets the third one back, because she is a mountain lion. Why does she care about any of this stuff going on here? Like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. The 
I recommend staying away from them, at least initially, until you guys get into Shadowrun's setting as a whole, if for no other reason than simplicities, because they also have a bunch of weird powers, and they get initiative dice, and it's like, sometimes it's hard to both adjust to a new setting and adjust to the idea that I'm actually a horse that can turn into a man. Why am I hanging out in the sprawl with all of this other stuff? Keeping in mind that when you are knocked unconscious, you revert to your animal form. So that's a big problem. Along with the fact that the shifters on a whole are worth some, a pretty pe- decent penny, because beyond just being sinless, not a person as most Shadowrunners are, you are an animal, you're not actually a person. Um, there's a whole bunch of qualities that are in Run Faster, which are really cool. And the lifestyle modifications lets you really get in there and design. Well, for one, where your character lives, and two, you can add a lot of those details to your, uh, like your group hangout, safe house, that kind of thing. It's a lot of details in there for that. So, it's a lot more difficult to reintroduce run faster stuff after you've gotten started because so much of it is based upon character creation that I recommend getting that kind of at the start, dependent upon how your group feels about jumping in headfirst on a new game. Um. That being said, the document that I'm looking at right here, I will have link. All of the blue stuff is in links to Drive Through RPG, where it's straight to the book that I'm talking about. And most of them are only twenty to twenty-five dollars on a pseudo permanent sale, which I'm sure is just a marketing technique that they've been using. Uh, Running Gun is the other book that I really recommend picking up first, or in your your first set, because it has a lot of cool things. You want to be the the unarmed ninja adept. Awesome, because now in Running Gun you have the rules for a variety of different martial arts that let you do a lot of neat things from, you know, different sword techniques to different wrestling moves to different just parkour rules and that kind of stuff. Um, The whole small unit tactics section is a knowledge skill that everybody can kind of pick up and gives you different bonuses as you guys, like, all right, you guys want to stack up on a door. One guy is going to throw a flashbang in, and the other guy is going to kick it open, and then the third guy is going to begin suppressing fire in the room. Awesome. With a small unit tactics roll, enough hits will get you bonus dice and all your actions in the follow-up. That's like a, a dynamic entry, that kind of thing. Or if you're running away, you can do a, a traveling Overwatch that is backing on out of it. Um interesting things you can do there. There's a v- large variety of called shots, most of them based around different ammo or location things that you're shooting at. You want to shoot a capsule round full of some horrible drug down a guy's throat? It shows, it has rules for that, rather than just kind of rule of cooling it. Which, part of that takes away from the improvisational and let's make things more fun way into the more mechanics way of doing things. But at the same time, having at least what the developers have as a a guideline will let you get a better feel for what you might need to do in other aspects. Um, There's a bit of gear in there, and there is the uh, whole section on explosives and different environmental things, deserts, underwater, the Arctic, that kind of thing. Pretty pretty solid book. Uh, Big thumbs up on that side. Coming down here are my number three choices for the order in which you should grab things. And this is really where it's going to start to break up and depend upon your specific table and what archetypes you have there. Um, For myself, just as a GM, mostly GMing on the hub and that kind of stuff, Rigger 5 gets my top spot for the number three because everybody can use vehicles and drones. There's some uh, some thought processes that, oh, it's like, well, I'm not a rigger, so I'm not going to buy fly spies or flying eyes or anything along those lines. And you're really kind of shorting yourself in the availability of information to your own character. I ran a street samurai for a long time that would carry two flying eyes, and he would, you know, you're going through a corporate building, he would set them up. One would go, let's say, three meters ahead of them, and one would follow, like, three to five meters behind them. And they would just have little arrows in your AR as you're walking down the street. 
not the street, the, the hallway, that drone that you set up there and headed, you can now see around the corner so you know if there's dudes stacked up ready to shoot you in the face. Or if there's somebody that's coming up behind you around the corner, that kind of thing. Very, very helpful. Um, so having drones and vehicles for everybody, having a car is great. Having a fancy car is sometimes better. Having details on things like submersible submarines or planes or basically anything as far as vehicles are concerned is awesome. In addition, having the vehicle mode, vehicle mods and drone mods allows you to make more specialized things. There's a a couple of different options as far as like spike strips or oil slicks to, be, to help you get away. Um, smuggling compartments, chameleon coating, concealed weapon mounts, things that yeah, a rigger would love, but are still really useful for a lot of things. The street samurai on your team is probably going to want, at the very least, a smuggling compartment in his car just to kiss illegal giant guns, and maybe a spike strip or oil slick or something that is a, I need to get away real quick. Kind of, oh no, I'm being chased. Um, there's also a little bit of rigor love in a special set of rules for vehicular chases that expand upon the core book's chase rules and a couple of electronic warfare actions that are kind of neat. Um, so those are those are exciting. Chrome Flesh is your augmentation book. It has cyberware, bioware, geneware, nanites, all kinds of stuff. And there's some really cool things in here, along with a couple of really neat qualities, a couple of... If, basically required qualities if you want to look at them that way. Um, cyber replacement lamp builds really kind of need the redliner quality because otherwise they're capped at a plus three instead of a potential plus four. And it helps balance out their meat stats so that they're not cripples in tin cans, which is never a, a good thing from a mechanical aspect. The expanded not only does it have like the raw Bioware and augmentation and that kind of stuff in there, but it also has a lot of information on the different um, the different megacorps, so that you can get run seeds from that. And some of the Geneware stuff is really cool. It will let you handle a bunch of the I want to get like some ridiculously exotic feature, or the nanites will give you like one shot buffs that you can effectively get, where it's like, okay, we're we're going into the Arctic. Let's all go get a nanite infusion that is going to help us deal with the extreme cold there. Or the cosmetic stuff is really neat. Or it gives a little bit more information on CFD, that kind of thing. I'm sorry, I'm struggling because I really only read the crunch section of Chrome Flesh. Um, Streak Remar is also really, really cool because it has everything you need for your mages and your adepts. So, more spells, more adept powers. Awesome. More meta magics, Even more awesome. And then there are, are three sections that are in there for GMs to play with. This is your, your Bug Spirit book, your Blood Magic book, and your um, some of your Shadow Spirits and that kind of stuff. Right? Where, hey, you want to do this really cool thing. I have now information for the kind of stuff you might run into on a Metaplaner quest. And that... There's a couple of interesting things on how blood magic works and how you can now see how they, when they deal damage either to themselves or to other people, that they can use that to buff their spells in certain ways or their adept powers in certain ways, stuff like that. Pretty cool. Uh, coming down here to my like fourth ranked books is going to be Hard Targets and Data Trails. Hard Targets is a neat book. I like it, but it's in a strange spot. It has a little bit of everything in it. There's a couple of spells, a couple of adept powers, a couple of augmentations, a couple of guns, a couple of gun mods, that kind of stuff. It's only in the number four spot because I'm of the person who believe that it should not exist. The content within Hard Targets should have been in their relevant books. Their spells and out of power should have been in Strike Grimoire. The guns should have been in Running Gun or uh, in Chrome Flesh. The augmentation should have been in Chrome Flesh. The other stuff should have been in the different books. Like, 
where it came out leads me to believe that they just kind of sliced off a little bit of things from other books as we've seen from other places. Um, Data Trails is pretty cool for for deckers. I'm going to be straight up. There is a handful of echoes and complex forms in Data Trails, but nothing like what we want to match our Technomancers up to our Magicians. There is no real information on Resonance Realms. There is no alternate uh, alternate streams. There is no Paragons, which are Mentor Spirits for Technomancers. None of that stuff. They claim there is a Technomancer book coming out, and perhaps I will make an edit to this video when it does, because I personally don't have a lot of faith in seeing it anytime soon, just because it's easier to not have faith and be surprised than it is to be super stoked for it and waiting. The Electronic Skier is pretty cool. They have a lot cheaper decks that you can't change around their uh, their arrays on, so it can be a little bit easier for either a street-level game or a person who is like splashing into being a decker with an agent. There's a couple of comics that do really cool and interesting things. There is some rules for making modifications to your gear, increasing an attribute here, adding a function it doesn't normally have there, that kind of stuff, which is open to abuse, but in a home game situation, you are able to crank down on it, as you will. The deep runs are where you go into the literal foundation of a host, and you do a thing. Deep runs are neat, or foundation runs, however you want to call them. They're cool in that it lets you apply knowledge skills and technical skills to do things in the same way that a street samurai would apply guns to guns to man. You can now do it with like uh, man, sorry, words. You can now do it with knowledge skills and the more technical side of things. It's complicated and it is very decker focused as such I would uh Unless you're playing a very Decker-focused game, I would kind of stay away from them or do it very lightly. They are a uh, they are a neat and cool idea wherein the rules don't really apply, but at the same time, not something you want to do all the time. And then I have a couple of lists on the other books here. There are some themed books which have some crunch in them, but they're usually on how other things happen. Uh, the Bullet and Bandages is a medical treatment book. There's a couple of neat bits of information about uh, advanced med kits and care under fire and that kind of stuff, which is if you have a a medic-oriented character on your team, that could be cool for them to check out. Uh, Gunhaven 3 has guns and guns and more guns in it. I wouldn't put it up in, I didn't put it up in the other one because that's all it really has is a bunch of guns. And it's cool, like, to, to see a bunch of different guns, but at the same time, I want a little bit more. This had been a great book to get the gun modification stuff from the other books, like hard targets and stuff, into, to make a more of a, a fuller book, or just put these guns in running gun. Uh, Doc Wagon 19 is a book based on the, the point of view of being in Doc Wagon which, given as Doc Wagon contracts, are a very neat thing, either to help your PCs not get murdered, or to make the challenge more difficult for your PCs, because when they trip those Doc Wagon bracelets, here comes the, the guys to save them. And that's uh, that can make things really awkward really quickly. Aetherology is a book on a bunch of the different metaplanes and has a couple of uh, otherworldly things in it. Could be really awesome if you have a um, a magic heavy group that wants to go on an astral quest, or if you're looking for just neat crazy things for maybe NPCs or bad guys or things that you come across. Uh, Shadow Spells is a DLC book. Uh, sorry to say, but it has a bunch of spells and adapt powers, and I think a couple of neat. Um, spirits and stuff in it. A couple of different traditions, I want to say, but off the top of my head I don't really remember. It's once you have the other magic books, sure, grab it. It's cheap, I want to say. Depends upon, obviously, your your localization. Um, 
there are some really cool spells in there. There's some really cool add-up powers in there. Damara is one of my favorite because it lets you kind of do almost anything. Which is like, uh, crap, I need to be able to, to help in some fashion with a skill that our team doesn't really have. Well, I can, I can have it for a couple of hours. Coyotes is all about border crossings and that kind of stuff, which is something that runners are probably going to do. And then in the last section down here, I have the campaign books, which are some of the big books that the CLG has put out. Not CLG, CG. You know what I mean. Um, they're neat, but I put them really low on my list of priorities, if for no other reason than unless you're setting your um, your campaign in these areas, you can kind of get by without them. I am missing two off of the list here. Um, oops, market panic and sprawl. Uh, market panic is neat because it tells you a lot about the different mega corporations, but there's no crunch in it. It's all a fluff book, which if you are really into the Megas, or you have a big plot down the line that you kind of want to do and you want more information on them, check it out. And then there's a Seattle Sprawl book, which mm, I forget the actual name of, that is actually should be up higher on the list for people who are newer to, to Shadowrun, because it has a large amount of information on different gangs and all of the other stuff that you're going to run into playing in Seattle. At the same time, if you want to do it somewhere outside of Seattle, you're going to be able to just do that. Um, I live outside of Philadelphia. I could totally run Shadowrun in Philadelphia, grab a map of Philly, and hack up the different sections of it. Like, East Philly is going to be controlled by as technology, where West Philly is controlled by Ares. Just to name things off the top of my head as far as you know, corporations go. Throw a couple of gangs that I make up in there, that kind of stuff. Just Go a little crazy. Use your hometown. It'll make people be like, oh, yeah, no. When they when you mention things that are relevant to your hometown that they would kind of get, uh, which when you're playing online and across the world, that's slightly different. But hey, um, the last two things I want to talk about in here are Chummer and Hero Lab, which I'll put different links to them down below as well. Uh, Chummer is a free program that you can use to create characters. It is well, for one, it is free. It is, however, not a licensed product. As such, you will not find any of the actual texts and things. And for example, when you put in your cyber deck, you'll be able to add programs to it, but it doesn't tell you what the programs do. However, it'll have the, like if it makes a statistic adjustment, it should do that. I say should because Chummer's a little buggy sometimes. Like, if you grab a gun, it'll have the damage stats and stuff on there. If you have qualities or that kind of stuff, it will make the changes that are appropriate to your dice pools. It has several artifacts from previous editions in it, and it is a little buggy at times, but it is free and makes sheets into some pretty nice PDFs if you, if you want. Um, Hero Lab is the other one. It is a paid product. If you are a just starting out group, I really recommend Hero Lab. Uh, I use it for all the video character creation stuff that I do. It's thirty bucks for the the core, which is the program plus the the one system, broken up over a group of let's say six people. That's five dollars a person, and it will have the exp all of the details from the book in it. So if I'm playing a mage, I can literally have my spells with all of their details printed out in front of me so that I don't have to reference the book for it. If I don't know what my adept powers do, it can have that listed there. If I needed my qualities spelled out because I'm a forgetful person, it'll do all of the math for all of your skills and stuff up top, and then if you have like a smart link, it'll take count for the smart links down in your, your stat block section for the gun. It's it's very helpful, and if you're doing like a face-to-face -face group, it's really easy to break up the cost over the, the six of you. Five bucks is less than what you're going to spend on pizza that you guys are going to buy later in the day. Moving forward with it, it has a really solid editor in it that you can add 
the information from the other books into it, which depending upon how you how you go about doing it. I am pretty incompetent when it comes to programming stuff, but I've managed to do a couple of things with it. Um, so long as you don't try to do anything crazy like add AIs or do infected things and all of that other kind of stuff, it is really simple to just open up a thing. Type Like when you're adding a spell, type the name of the spell. If you have the PDF, maybe from one of the links here, copy the, the game text from the PDF into the description box on Hero Lab. Click the, the drain code, click the school that it's in, and then hit save. And that spell should then show up in the appropriate spell list in the in the book. I'm sorry, in Hero Lab. But that is going to bring us to our end for this video today. Um, this is the, the basics basics. I will be putting up an advanced basics in a little while. Or maybe already up, depending upon when you look at this. I want to thank you guys for coming out and checking out. Uh, I am reachable at Gmail at GMBAMCE. B A M C E. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, please hit me up there or on Twitter at GM underscore BAMCE. B A M C E. Uh, I usually tweet out when I'm going to go live with any of this uh, GM stuff or any of the Runner Hub games that I'm into or basically anything that I'm doing that I'm going to stream and or record, I will tweet about it because that is how that is how things work. If you have any questions, comments, or if I screwed stuff up, please put a, a comment in the video description, and I will get it fixed as soon as possible. Thank you guys very much, and I will talk to you later.